I've recorded this whole video once and I've realized that my microphone was not on. So let's do this again. What's up YouTube? It's your boy Barcode. I'm back with another video. This video is going to be specifically on team comp that I used to get the 4,000 trophies. I'll give you an explanation of my thought process on my team comp, some strategies that I use, a second variation of it with one different monster, and I'll show you some gameplay and my thought process of what I was thinking during the match. 89% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed, so I would greatly appreciate if you hit that sub button. It'll help the channel grow, it'll help the community that we're trying to build grow, and it'll help me help you as your free to play content creator. So if you like the content, you know what to do. Hit that sub button, hit the like button, hit the dislike button. It doesn't really matter. Just be honest. Comment down below and tell me why. Hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you get notified when I post a new video. Let's get to it. And here's the team comp that I used to get the 4K. As you can see, there's no legendary monsters in here. You don't need them. I fought many teams with many legendary monsters. I based these team comp off of three different things. Keeping max acceleration, keeping max attack buff, and keeping great sustain. First I have Kuhn in the front line. Kuhn is there for two different things. One, he's very tanky. He also gives himself a defense buff and immunity. But one of the most important things about Kuhn is he has an AoE freeze to the closest monsters available. This is important for a couple reasons. One, usually the supports are in the front line of the enemy team and maybe one damage dealer. If I can serve my mana to be around 7 or 8 and I counter with Kuhn to freeze, I then follow it up immediately with Lapis. When an enemy is frozen, it's an automatic crit. This can be more beneficial than an AoE defense break and then AoE. If you can get a defense break plus frozen plus AoE damage, it's huge damage. I used to use Prey Lee in this team cop instead of Kali, but I found that against wind units I didn't have good single target damage. I bring Bernard and Megan together so that I can get that max 3 acceleration. I bring Shannon for the level 2 defense buff plus to refresh that attack buff. Keeping the attack buff at level 3 is highly important. Important. Not only for Lapis and Kali, but just for auto attacks in general. My team can sustain health pretty well, especially with McKean and Colleen here, which is the other combo I wanted to talk about. McKean is underrated, especially if you have her immunity skill stone. You can counter with McKean to block eternal fires from Perna, or to block Beretta's continuous damage, or if anyone in the front line ahead of her is low health, I can pretty much close to heal her to full, it balances out the whole team, and then I run Colleen right after her to heal up the whole team some more. That's not the only reason I bring Colleen. Two other reasons is one, there's an attack buff, and also she's an anti-Lucian. Lucian can't do much damage to her at all, and usually after Lucian goes, I follow up with Colleen. If I have Colleen and Lapis in my hand, I then look and see what enemies are available. If there's one person on the front line left, then I will not use Lapis, but if there's two or more, I'm using Lapis to give her that shield so no health of hers goes down. However, if there's only one person, then I use Colleen right after Lucian instead. Like I discussed before, I bring Kali for that single target snipe if it crits that person is dead. She also brings a heal block, which is very important, especially with a Ramagod front line or anyone really. The other variation of this team comp is actually using Kamun in place of Kali. If you ever lose a couple matches, try switching to a different team comp or a different variation. It's not that the other team comp is better or the other one's worse, just switching it up seems to work sometimes. And then I bring Lapis. I didn't use Lapis for the longest time, but a couple of streams ago I pulled a ton of Lapis cards during a summon session, and I also summoned her hero stone which increases the damage of magic burst by 25% which is huge and because that's the only hero stone I have I'm using her no matter what so I built this team based off of Lapis. The thought process I had was, I need the attack buff, I need the speed, and I need Giant Warrior. The rest were fill-ins like I stated in this video. Keep the attack buff up, keep the speed up, support Lapis, and bring a single target person to help with win targets. For my spells, like I said, I'm bringing Giant Warrior. I save Giant Warrior to close to the end. I have to wait till Kali dies before I use Giant Warrior. Kali has more attack, and she will get the buff. This makes me save Giant Warrior to closer to the end, and it's actually more beneficial this way. I don't want to get 
get stun locked by an Orion or a Jean. And at that point, it's usually backline versus backline anyway. So I want to do a ton of damage. I don't want to get hit by Chain of Despair either. Speaking of Chain of Despair, I also bring that. I think a lot of people would bring Transfer instead. But I like Chain of Despair, especially for those Jeans and Orions. If my Giant Warrior has already fallen out, I always have Chain of Despair in my hand. Last but not least, I bring a Soul Cleanse. This is an extra cleanse. It's a heal. And plus, if I do cleanse, I get mana back, which is more beneficial. It's pretty much a free cleanse. I'm going to show you the team that I took down to get the 4k. It was a heavy AoE team. I'll talk about my thought process during the match. First and foremost, I want to talk about the starting hand. In my team comp, I prefer starting out with Bernard and Shannon. In this case, I don't have Bernard and Shannon. All I have is Megan. I always try to start out getting acceleration first so I get more mana back quickly. Alright, so I do start out with Megan here to get the acceleration and now I do know I have attack 2. I also been use Bernard right after that to get to speed up 3. Beretta does AoE cleanse, I mean AoE damage. I see that it's 3 ticks so I do use McKean. They're going to steal all my buffs, which is fine. So I'm going to use Colleen right after McKean to heal up my whole team. I see that I got Shannon. I want to get a defense buff. But I save my mana to see that because I saw they had Perna. So I do an AoE Freeze, which is a good combo. I have a level 2 attack buff with Lapis. And watch this automatic crit and how much damage it does. 2k on some. It's huge damage on that front line. So now, pretty much, I just keep my team sustained. I know I needed to kill that Konamiya as quick as possible. I'm going to use my Soul Cleanse early here. This is so I can get more mana back, and I saw I had McKean in the deck, so I could relieve those stuns. Also balances out my team. I heal with Colleen right after. My team is pretty much full for the most part. I now start to rebuff so I can turn all my cards back into what I need to. I'm going to use Shannon to keep up that attack level 3 and get a defense buff. I want to talk about a key factor and a pro tip. When Perna dies, there's a delay. Mana keeps going and time keeps going. Even if you use a skill, the skill will not work until after Perna gets revived. Now, on that note, right when Perna goes into the ground, if you use a skill, it's going to target the next person in line. If you wanted to target Perna again, you have to wait until she's completely up. Now, in this situation, I knew this was coming, so I use Lapis instead of Kali, so I can attack the whole back line and do AoE damage. I do this so many times, I love it. Here we go. Perna dies. Watch when I click, which is right now. And I attack the whole back line. And, and then I will cleanse all this off with McKean, the underrated monster. I'm going to use Colleen to heal my team up. I still have eight monsters on my team. Get some more acceleration. Keep the attack buff up. I'm not worried about the dots at this point anymore. They got Chain of Despair on me, so I knew since I used my Soul Cleanse early that could be a problem. But I'm not too worried about it because I have Giant Warrior. I'm just saving mana here. I'm gonna do big damage with Lapis. See, I see my front lines dying. So right after this Megan, I'm going to use Giant Warrior when Kali is dead. I just need to watch out for it. I'm just, I'm just, oh, there's a Chain of Despair, and I, I used it so I could get a card out of my hand, I think, I can't remember. But now that Chain of Despair is on Megan, I need to use Giant Warrior, like ASAP. There we go. Now I don't get Chain of Despair when, if Megan would die. But it's pretty much game over from here. And that's my thought process on pretty much the match. There's a lot of different variations of it. 
of what I think. There's different situations, but I hope this helps you succeed. So there you have it, free to play, 4,000 trophies, challenger title. The legendary card I got from the event was Rakan. If you like the content, you know what to do. Sub, like, ding a ding a bell. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.